Okay, in this video, I'm going to show you how to build a tank stand, or at least the structure of a tank stand from start to finish. I know there's a lot of people out there that would like to build their own stands, but don't have the confidence to do it. Well, here's one example. And that brings me to another note. I'm not a professional. I don't do this for a living. Um, I've built anywhere from 20 to 25 tank stands. And I'll tell you this, no two are alike. So there's, I don't think there's any right or wrong way to build a stand. There may be some wrong ways, but there's so many different ways to build a stand. So this is just one example, and please know that. Okay, what I'm doing right now is just giving a rough cut. I need about 32 inches or so, so I'm going to cut it about 34 inches just to get the, the pieces in a manageable, manageable size. I'm going to take them through the table saw and a clip here in a minute and sure up the edges give me a nice square piece of lumber to work with. This uh, sliding compound miter saw that I'm using is a 12 inch Hitachi. It's, it's one of the best you can get. I'll tell you, this saw is amazing. It came calibrated and accurate, uh, fully aligned straight out of the box. Never had to make any adjustments and I still haven't had to make any adjustments. It cuts it square every time. Uh, each of its set points are perfect. It's a little more of an expensive saw, but you really get what you pay for. Just look up the reviews. Everybody loves it. Okay, so now at the table saw, I'm going to take these two by sixes. I'm going to cut a quarter of an inch off of each side and give me a nice square edge. <clears throat> this is the reason why I do this is when you're screwing together a stand or when I'm doing anything with any type of wood project, I like to have a square edge because your joints are going to be tighter, your measurements are going to be more precise, and you can get very, very accurate results. So we're talking about working within one thirty-second of an inch. Um, and so you want to have a nice square piece of lumber. So we're going to square up the edges with this, uh, this ripping right here. And we'll go back to the miter saw and square up the ends again before we measure out our final length for the, uh, the supports. These are going to be the vertical supports that we're cutting right now. Now we've got our nice squared edges lengthwise. We're just going to use a miter saw again. I'm going to cut each edge just a little piece off just to make sure it's nice and square. And this only works if you if your tool is square, you know. So if this saw was not square, um, if it was off by just a little bit, it'll throw the entire project off uh, as you go. So you always want to start with the most accurate measurements because it's going to be the mistakes are going to be compounded as you get go on later in the build. And before we cut anything to length. We're going to make sure they're square. So you're going to use your combination square or a triangle, something that you can use to, to check your accuracy. And if it needs to be adjusted, you adjust it, cut another small piece off until you've got it perfect. Then you can cut it to the exact length. Okay, for this next, next part, we want to make sure that all of these vertical supports are going to be the exact same length. And you can't do that with a ruler or a tape measure and a pencil. You just can't. So I'm going to set up a little jig here with my uh, my miter saw. First thing you see me doing, I'm screwing the miter saw to the work workbench. That way that can't possibly move. That's not a variable anymore. It's not moving. Then I'm going to set up a few blocks of wood down towards the edge. I'm going to measure out and mark my length, which I believe is around 42 inches or so. It's, it's a pretty tall stand. I'll mark my length and make my cut if it's exactly what I want. I'll butt it up against those blocks that are being held by a clamp and then every piece from there on I'll butt up right next to the exact same spot and every single piece will be the exact same length. As long as I've got the clamp there and I've got the miter, the miter saw screwed to the table, nothing can change. And that's the key to getting exact cuts. Now here you can see we've got a smaller piece that we want to get exact cuts with. And you can see it clamp just a small piece of wood right there onto the miter saw. And it's going to give us the exact measurement we want every time. Now I've got all the pieces I need cut to the perfect length. Everything matches up exactly. So now we can just get it ready for assembly. Now I'm going to use what is called a pocket hole joint. Uh, it's, it's going to be a screw, but it's going to be angled into the wood. And it creates a very, very tight joint. It's one of the, the best joints you can you can actually use with screws uh, specifically but it, it also hides the head of the screw very well now to do this I use a jig uh, which you can see right there the, the blue thing in the picture in the video and 
that just clamps it up against it and you have a, a drill bit that comes with the kit that allows you to make your angled um, hole and it also drills a little pilot right at the end to help guide your screw in the right angle so you can set these to the proper dimensions by using the thickness of the wood and the length of screw that you have and then it's all automatic from there we're going to plan out where we want all the screws that way when we're assembling we're not trying to drill angled holes into a flat piece of wood it just doesn't work very well and the last thing i'm going to do before we start screwing these pieces of wood together is drill a few pilot holes anytime that you're going to have to put a screw straight through a piece of lumber like this you don't want it splitting, especially on a tank stand, so always drill pilot holes. In case you're wondering why I'm doing this on my table saw, I have a workbench space, but they're not perfectly flat. This uh, table saw is made out of cast iron, and it's perfectly flat, so I can clamp these pieces of wood down to the table, and my joints are all going to be perfect. I'm just going to repeat this process as we go to assemble the entire stand, clamping down pieces, wood to wood, wood to the table, whatever it takes to get perfect joints that are nice and tight and perfectly aligned. We want to make sure they're square. You can see my triangle on the table there. I'm going to check those joints every time I do one. Okay, now that we have most of the structure done, we're going to do the sump supports down at the bottom and in order to make them accurate as possible we just take two blocks that you can see right here that i'm clamping that block stack them on top of each other make the cut at one time so they're the exact length and then clamp them in place just like you see me doing right here now i know right here it looks like we went backwards but uh we kind of did when I started doing the top part where the two by sixes are used as headers, I decided to go ahead and split the stand in half again. And you'll see in just a second that we'll join them back up real quick, but it was just easier to break them apart for the moment. And I needed to make adjustment on the two by four uh, vertical supports. All right, here we've got the main structure of the stand done. All we have left to do really is the, the bottom piece of plywood for the sump and the top piece of plywood to hold the tank. Okay, now I'm ready to cut the plywood pieces for the bottom and the top and I needed them to be 32 and a quarter but my table saw the fence only goes out to 31 inches so instead of just uh, improvising and clamping the fence down a little bit further out I went ahead and just measured from the other side I'm going to try to make a precise exact cut cutting the smaller section off and the bigger section will end up being the 32 and a quarter that I need so as you can see right here I cut a little bit into it and then I'm going to come around and measure it it's make sure it's spot on and it is and then go ahead and complete the cut later on you'll see whenever I cross cut this piece of plywood I'm gonna set the fence up because it's a smaller piece of wood it's more manageable this right here is a full sheet of plywood it's four by eight okay so I'm finished ripping this piece of wood and now I've got to cross cut it at 32 and a quarter to get that perfect square that I need but uh, using a, a piece of wood this large and trying to cross cut only 32 and a quarter would be really, really hard and be really stupid to even try. So what you see I'm doing right here is cutting it at about 33 inches with a jigsaw. It doesn't matter how crooked the line is. I'm just going to cut it real quick. And then I'm going to cut the other piece from the other end. That way I'm starting with at least three square sides. And then I'll clean up that one edge at exactly 32 and a quarter. Okay, now I'm doing my final cross cut here. 
just cleaning up the edge, getting it to 32 and a quarter. And you can see on the right hand side there, I've got the, the fence clamped down to exactly 32 and a quarter, even though <clears throat> my table won't allow for it to go that far out. It stops right at 31. But you just have to improvise a little bit, take your time setting it up, measure many, many times, and you'll end up with the right cut. Now I'm going to glue and nail the bottom plywood piece down for the sump. And you'll notice that uh, I've actually added some scab pieces to give it a little bit of a ledge above where the, the plywood is going to be. And if you don't see it right now, you'll see it as soon as I put the plywood piece in. I did that as an afterthought. It would have been a lot smarter for me to just use 2x6s in the first place instead of 2x4s and some scab pieces. But it was an afterthought. And the reason why I'm doing it, I'm going to do it all the way around is to, to give some kind of space to hold a little bit of spilled water. I'm going to seal it up with caulk and paint it with uh, some <clears throat> waterproof paint or water resistant paint, mold resistant, mildew, all that. I right, will just pop some nails in there, nails and glue. It's going to hold it really well. And you'll see in here as you watch this clip that I use the tape measure as a guide to know exactly where the stud is below in the middle there. That way we hit it every time and there's no nails just popping out. Now you can see the spill perimeter all the way around. I'm going to caulk up all of the seams, corners, edges, everywhere the wood meets down there in the sump and hopefully try to prevent some spills from leaking out. All right, now we're going to slap some paint on here everywhere on the stand that there's bare wood. I'm using a, a Zenser primer coat. It's a, a sander sealer, or I'm sorry, primer sealer in one. It's pretty good stuff. It's real thick, it covers pretty nicely, and uh, I've never had any problems with it in the past. Now you can see we've got it all painted. I've got it in the room situated kind of where it's going to end up being, just for pictures. I've got the top on there. You can see the, the hole in the middle for the overflow and all the plumbing. It'll be a center overflow tank. And as far as finishing the rest of the stand, making it look good and match the room, that'll come towards the end of the build. We'll skin it out with some, uh, some wood on the outside and make it look like uh, I drew up in that drawing in the first video. Uh, thank you for watching and uh, stay tuned for the next video.